Hello, this is Saul, and today I want to show you how to convert a Wikipedia episode guide into a TSV format. I was digitizing my TV collection, and uh, one of my favorite shows is called News Radio from the 90s. It's really quite good. I wanted to put together a episode guide to go along with the collection. And so Wikipedia has a list of episodes, and Visitata can just access that with the dash F HTML option. It'll parse HTML straight from the web. And so here we go. Here are the six tables that are on that web page. The first one is just the list of seasons and the number of episodes, etc. from there. And then every other table is the actual individual season and the episodes of that season. And you'll notice that it's not quite formatted correctly. Um, it turns out that the page has the row of data followed by the description, and another row of data, another description, etc. So they're kind of alternating. But that's okay, that's what we're gonna clean up. And so there's there's two things. So one, we're gonna clean that up. And the second thing, we wanna combine all of the seasons into one single table. And so let's do that first. What I wanna do is, so you'll notice down the lower right there, with this is six sheets. That's showing us that every one of these rows is actually a proper visit at a sheet. And so when we press enter on one of these, it actually just pushes that sheet and loads it straight away. And so we can actually select the sheets that we wanna use here and combine. I'm only selecting these four because it turns out that only the first four seasons are actually good. And those are the ones that I have in my collection, but still. So we have those four seasons. If we yank these GY onto the clipboard, it says four sheets to clipboard, and then we're gonna go to the sheets sheet, and this here also is a list of sheets, as you can see in the lower right there. And if we paste these with P, then now the four sheets that we've we copied to the clipboard are on this sheet here, the sheets sheet, and are now available. Visited only loads sheets when you go to the sheet itself, it does things on demand like that. So if we wanted to get these loaded before then, we could use a reload. If we press just Control R to reload something, it's only going to reload the current sheet. But if we press G Control R, it reloads all sheets. And in fact, so there you can see that those four sheets have now been loaded. What we want to do is actually join the sheets together. We're going to append them together. And so we're going to select all four sheets there and press ampersand, that's the join function. Now you can see the different kinds of joins that we can do. And we're gonna go for append, and that's just because they have all the same columns and everything, we're just gonna append the four sheets together. And there we go. So now we've got all four sheets in the same place. I'm gonna go back to the sheets sheet just briefly here and edit that to be news radio. This is the name, the name of the sheet. And then go back to there. Now we've got the news radio episode guide that we're gonna be starting to work with. So now let's do this uh, second part of it. Well, all we really want to do is just move the description up in a certain sense to be on the same row as the rest of the data. That's a little tricky because of how it's structured here. So I'm going to do two approaches. First is going to be the, the kind of the easier approach that it will work because of the way this data is. And the second one will be, it will show a lot more features, but um, be a lot more universal. The easy way to do this is to use the fill command. We're gonna use the fill command in both scenarios. So if we press F on a column, it won't actually do something here because these are all the blank fields are errors. But the idea is that if they were nulls, then it would fill the nulls in with the value previous in the column. And so we can convert these errors to nulls by pressing G tick that's gonna freeze the entire sheet. It basically copies every value on the sheet into a new sheet. And it doesn't keep the errors though, because errors are just empty values. And so here we have a frozen copy, that was G tick. And so now you can see that with the little null symbol, these are null fields. Okay, and so now if we do a fill on this, for instance, this number in season, you'll see that it filled in all the values for all the things. I'm gonna do this for each one of the columns here. And now we have the description on the same line as, as the rest of the data. So if we just now go ahead and remove the, the numbered ones, basically the ones that aren't valid. We don't, I don't actually care about the number in series. We already have the number in the season and we'll get the season number from the production code. We're going to select everything with GS, and then we're going to unselect with backslash the ones that have more than 
two characters. And so we're going to use a dot for three characters, and then anything that's got three characters or more is going to be deselected. Now if we use GD to delete all the selected rows, what we have left here is every individual row having a description. And I'll rename this column to description here. And the rest of the data is as we want it. And there's a couple of things I would do here, but that's the general idea. So let's go back and try it a different way. So I'm going to quit out of this sheet, and that just takes us back to the original here with all of the errors, etc. And we're actually going to use a very similar tactic. So we're, again, we're going to freeze the sheet with gtick, and that again pushed a frozen copy and made all the errors into nulls. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to melt the sheet down into every row has one single value, one basically effectively cell from this sheet. And then we're going to repivot it up so that the data is in the right form. So we're going to use what we do need though is we need a key column that associates all these together. Let's use the production code because we're guaranteed that it's unique and it'll be a good key column for this. So we're going to use the same fill command that we did before with F and that fills this in here. And I'm going to toss this over to the far left now with G capital H that moved it all the way over here. And I'm going to press bang on it and that makes it a key column. And so now if we melt this sheet, you'll see that every value other than the production code has its own row. And they're all associated with the production code. And it, and it also has ignored all the nulls. So everything else that we didn't care about didn't make it onto this. And so now we want to convert the number in series. So let's say we want to select all of these numbers in series here. We press comma to do that. So we actually want to only keep the ones selected that have more than one character in there. And so deselect all of these here with dot, dot, dot. And now we've only got this number in series, number one thing in there. Let's change this, all these fields. We're gonna use GE here to set all of the selected values in this column to just number. And so that's taking care of one of those things. And then if I unselect those and then reselect the number, the rest of the number in series sheets, these are all the descriptions. And we'll set those to be description as well. We had one column that had two different kinds of values in it. And we've now differentiated between the ones that were just the number properly and ones that were the actual description. So now we're going to unselect those. And so now if we pivot this back up, which is pivot is the opposite of melt. If you'll note that melt is a capital M, pivot is a capital W. To me, they look like inverses, right? A W is an upside down M. Also, I think it looks kind of like a little joint or a pivot. But um, if we pivot that back up, we keep the key column is going to stay as the key column on the pivot sheet. So that's every, it's gonna be grouped by that. So every same value of production code will be a single row. And then we're gonna set an aggregator on the value. We have to use a valid ag aggregator for this. We're gonna use max. And so if we set the aggregator to max here, that means that for every row in the pivot table, and for every column, it'll take the maximum value. And because there's only one value for every given row variable combination, that's just whatever value it is. And so now if we press Shift W to pivot this up here, then you can see that we've done exactly what we said, where we've got for every production code, there is a row that has all of the columns and values associated with it. You'll note that the columns have changed their names. Now it's value max number and value max title and stuff like that. And that's just a nice handy ism that visited it does for you so that it shows you what the actual contents are. So let's fix this up a little bit. We're going to go to the columns sheet and you'll see that there are now here this all the names here have value max underscore in them. And you'll see that there are those two columns at the bottom, the total value max and total count. I'm going to just delete those with D. And deleting those, even more so than hiding them, just takes them out of the picture completely. They're actually removed from the columns. You can't get them back. Now we have the rest of these columns here, most of which have value underscore max in them. Let's remove that from them. We're going to use a bulk edit command here. So I want to transform this column with star. Star will transform it by a regex. And so we're just going to specify value max underscore. And then the first part is the regex to match. And then after the slash is whatever to replace it with. 
And this, so this will just remove value underscore max underscore from anything that has it. Anything that doesn't have it will just be copied straight away. And that's exactly what we see here in this name underscore re column. Now, so that is a separate column that we've added and that doesn't affect the actual name itself. If we want it to actually be copied onto the name, so we actually set the names properly for the columns, now we use g equals to mass set these values to a certain expression. And the expression will just be name re, which is just the next door column, and there you go. So now their names have been changed. And in fact, if we go back to the main sheet, then you'll see that the names, sure enough, are set properly. Now we've got largely the data that we want in the form that we want. Let's do some other uh, things here. So I want to pull out the ISO date here instead of having this, this little mess here. So let's do this. We're going to match this and capture the date in here. And so this is the original air date. We'll hide this column and we'll change this name to just air date. And I don't actually think I care about the number in the series, so we'll hide that column. We do want the series number though, so let me change this to prod code and I'll get the season number. It happens to be handy that it's just the first character of the prod code here. And so that's the season number and this will be the number in the season. And that's it. Let's move the prod code over with shift L to just before the description. And this is the data in the form that I basically wanted. And so now I can save it off as just the episode guide.tsv. And now I have the episode guide like I wanted it to. So those are two different ways to get the same general result. And one's uh, easier, but one's more flexible. And I hope that that helps you get some data in the form that you want it. Thanks for using Visit Data, and I'll see you next time.